this is courtesy of Kanye, of course. Um, he's been on the top of the list in terms of the conversation around hip hop in general, what's going on with the album. And now there's another sort of plot line, another sort of thing to kind of keep attention on this weird sort of back and forth that he's having with Drake that doesn't really make much sense, um, which is confusing to kind of get at the genesis of what the actual issue is. But for us fans in general, it's highly, highly, highly entertaining. So this was a, you know, this was a, yeah, this was a post that Kanye put on his feed that he obviously deleted later on. But this was in response, if I'm not mistaken, to a track that came out featuring Drake on a Trippy Red single that was due to come out of the album. But for whatever reason, it didn't come on the album. I think Trippy Red explained in the interview that supposedly Drake was finishing it really late and the word around town or in the industry that supposedly Drake takes long to finish verses and he does them at the right minute. He hands them in right at the last minute because he's a perfectionist and whatnot, etc. Et 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 but regardless of how, how it transpired, it worked out perfect for him. Trippy was able to get some uh, love for the album itself, Sans the Drake feature. It still sounded pretty good. I think, in my opinion, it's maybe his best body of work outside of his mixtapes from the beginning to the front. And then as soon as the single leaked this, the following week, or maybe even a few days later, and people actually got to hear what he said and how that triggered Kanye, I think in general he's probably happy that it worked out the way it did regardless if it wasn't on the original album that dropped. So um, if you're curious about what it was, I think it was this. I got it here on this page. So this this is basically in response so the drake track is i think it's called betrayal um trippy red featuring drake and he says the following line all these fools i'm beefing that i barely know 45 44 Burnt let it go ain't shit for me and set it stop that to me is hilarious, right? The fact that he says all these fours I'm um, beefing that I barely know. 45, 44, burned out, let it go. So maybe kind of depicting people would say 45 and four, 45 and 44 are in relation to Pusha T and Kanye's ages. And then him saying, yeah, you're changing shit for me is set in stone. It's hilarious that such an innocuous, lightweight, funny, humorous kind of playgroundy kind of insult of a bar would really set off Kanye in the way it did where he's posting this meme of Joker from the Joker movie right we live in a society where and then he's also um posting a screenshot of the meme obviously in his messages with the text at the bottom that says I live for this I've been fucked with by nerd ass jockey niggas like you my whole life you will never recover from this I promise you and if you look at the recipients of the message itself it looks like he tagged or he included Drake in his um uh, group chat of his sms's and i think maybe that might be virgil or a few other people i'm not too sure are involved and it's hilarious i'm not too sure what the top bit is here about the green watch some people are alleging that kanye wanted the same green watch that virgil made for drake that he kind of shouted out in that song with travis i'm not too sure if that's a facts but it's just interesting to me just from a viewer point of view to see you know usually kanye is very kind of um you know uh, what's that thing called he's got a lot of self-confidence obviously right he doesn't necessarily feel like somebody that feels like he's inadequate the only time you see Kanye act, act somewhat inadequate or a little bit sort of um shy is really in the space of kind of you know design or fashion elites right or like the top of the top you see him with Demna and you quite see the reverence that he has for him and whatever and some and earlier on when he was talking to people like Anna Wintour and Karen Royfield you can see that he knew what part they played in an industry that he clearly wants to be involved in and he was a little bit more like you know reserved and less kind of bombastic as he usually is but when it comes to music stuff you can't really talk to him right he kind of walks around and kind of you know lets his, lets his nuts hang for lack of a better term so it's interesting to see in music that somebody like a Drake could still touch his buttons and make him react in such an emotional, sensitive way. It's just odd. You never really see this with him. You, like, you can clearly see he feels inadequate. He feels less than. He feels, I don't know, whatever he feels, for whatever reason. It's just interesting to see Superman, that is Kanye, react in this way, right? Basically, Drake is his kryptonite. That is it. Drake is definitely Kanye's kryptonite. And we don't really know why. Um, people like to say it's because, you know, Drake, I mean, Kanye didn't give Drake that instrumental or whatever or didn't get a tune, but I don't really think that's the case. I don't think you can get to this point where there's this much animosity between people. I know sometimes artists can be sensitive. We saw what happened with Meek because Drake didn't retweet or share his album and it led to the flipping back-to-back -back freestyles and whatnot and Meek alleging or basically saying that Drake doesn't write raps, cool, cool, cool. But in general, 
it doesn't it takes more than that for you to be like mortal enemies and it feels like they're at a point where they can never recover and also this really spits in the face of flipping karen civil that flipping grifter who basically alleged that they were cool now and they were on speaking terms like and we knew that wasn't true we knew that was never going to happen um more likely than not that relationship is completely deteriorated but I would like to know what the real reason is why they don't like each other, especially why Kanye doesn't like Drake, because I feel like it's more so on Kanye's end than anything. What really is the issue here? And maybe that goes to the point where Drake said, he basically alleges that he feels that like Kanye is the one that told Pusha T about his kid, um, or whatever it may be. It definitely came from his side in that respect, maybe. But I always, I really want to know what the reason is. I'm curious. I'm really curious because at the end of it, it's just seeing Kanye, you know, thinking about Kanye frantically searching on google for a joker meme and writing that and putting him in the tech like thinking of him being that angry and very unchristian like is super hilarious but in general for the fans guess what we're gonna get the best music now we're gonna get the best product ever maybe the fact that we've seen these amazing performances in stadiums is maybe kind of reaction to what drake's been doing behind the scenes we don't know and you know great work usually comes from tension right animosity um, struggle backs against the wall and we're probably going to see both of these guys put out some of their best work because of this beef because of this tension because of this rivalry and i for one as a fan of music as a fan of the culture i can't wait i really can't because i feel like kanye is flat to deceive in his last previous albums i think the leak that we have so far or what we heard of this album donda sounds incredible it's definitely up there with my beautiful artistic fantasy but the life of pablo and you know the other one um way to the iphone picture they'll appreciate the yay album i think that was called right they want the best um and then of course you know like we know drake is still maybe lacking in terms of having a classic body of work in terms of an album i don't believe so but people do believe that if that's the case this is definitely the one that you want to come out with where people can say undeniably you've got one classic in your arsenal or your library and you sprinkle a couple of tracks in there that take no and insult at the person you're fighting with and then boom we've got a great conclusion so i think for fans it's incredible um for kanye it's really funny to see a grown man you know researching or finding these memes in order to kind of insult drake but you know all's fair in love and war i guess always fair